Hey folks, Tim Newman with Soft Light Studios coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Obviously, we're producing this video a little late at night here, and uh, we're dealing with a little bit of a lower light situation. I'm kind of thinking of this as a presidential news conference orange. At any rate, in Ohio, we're still on lockdown, and we're still dealing with that coronavirus pandemic and trying to take it on head on and beat that sucker. So, in order to keep you entertained and indoors where you should be, bringing you another video with some more insider information on Photoshop. This time, all about creating clipping layers and some of the shortcuts that are available to you there and some of the really cool effects you can get with not a lot of work. Take a look. In this video, we're going to spend some time taking a look at Photoshop's clipping layer features. Now, whether you are aware of it or not, in Photoshop, you can take one layer and clip it into the layer below it and use that layer below it as a container of sorts for controlling what's visible and what isn't from the above layer. What's even cooler in Photoshop is clipping layers work with text layers, which is super cool. It gives you really neat effects with a very minimal amount of work. Now, what's even cooler than that is that for you, for this exercise, I have provided the sample files that I'll be using so that you can download them free of charge. If you look down in the description below, you will find a Google Drive link where you can click on that and download these files locally and follow along with me. Let's hop on over into Photoshop and get started with our project. All right, now, I know you guys didn't want me to go away right away, so I'm gonna pop up over here in the corner. Hi, I'm back. Here is our sample document. This is what it's going to look like when it's all done. And just, just to torture you a little bit, I'm not going to give you this finished document. You're going to have to build your own. But here's what we have. We have a poster that we've put together. We're anticipating the end of this coronavirus lockdown, and we're going to be ready to go out and celebrate and get some margaritas. And so for our local bar, we have created a poster that's 12 inches high and 36 inches wide. And we can tell it's that size because we can see the rulers right here on the screen, and you can see it's 0 to 12 this way and 0 to 36 this way. Now, I have my rulers on, so it makes it always easy for me to see that. And I do that with a Command R on the Mac, and that's a Control R on Windows. You can make them come and go. And at any point in time, I can right-click on that ruler, and I can see, yep, that's in inches. So real easy for me to confirm the size of that document without having to go up and run up to the menu and grab the image size dialog box up there. So that's the size of our document. I think it looks pretty good. And you can see here, we have a picture of some glasses all lined up in the background. And on top of that, we have this folder right here, which contains a gradient fill, a picture of some limes apparently, and some text that we put in here. Let's just tear this apart one step at a time. If we take out this gradient fill, you notice the limes become darker and more contrasty. So that's obviously what we're doing there. If we take out the picture of the limes, then we just get down to the black text that we've created. Now you can see looking at the text, we've put a stroke on that text. We've put an outer glow on that text, and we've even put a drop shadow on the text. So it starts off as pretty simple, plain text, and we just keep building up and adding features to it until we get it to look the way we want it to look. Then we add these limes, and we clip that layer to the text, and it looks like that. And then we put the gradient fill on there to kind of mute that down a little bit. Now, real quickly, just looking at the gradient fill, we can see if we highlight that layer, that our opacity of that gradient fill is right around 50%. And you can see the higher I make that opacity, the less I see of those limes. The lower I make that opacity, the more I see of those limes. So I'm just basically using this gradient fill layer to kind of moderate how bright and contrasty that lime layer is here. Let's close this folder up, and you can see we have another version of the text down here, and this is one that we built with lime slices. So here, if we open this up, you can see we have a picture of some lime slices, and pretty much the same exact text. We've got a stroke and an outer glow. The only thing we don't have on this one is that drop shadow. So you can see this is real straightforward to build, not too difficult to put together. Looks complicated when it's all done, but we're going to walk you through all of the individual steps in building this. And I think you'll see before too long, not that tough. So let's get started with building our own poster from scratch here. And if you've gone out and grabbed the files from the Google Drive and you have them 
ready locally, that would be great because you'd be ready to follow along at full speed. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document here. So we're going to up here and run the file new command. And this new document, as we said, is going to be 36 inches wide. You can see we have that set here. 12 inches high. We got that right here. We're going to go with 300 pixels per inch. That makes for nice print resolution. Pretty much anytime we're working with photographs or we're going to print anything photographically, we want to be in that RGB color mode. And then I always work in that 16-bit color depth. I like that. It gives me the potential to hold more colors in my document. Normally, I don't start off with a black background, but you can see we have one in our sample document, so we're going to stick with that for here. And then, as always, I work in Photo RGB, which is my working color space for just about anything that I work on in Photoshop. If you have questions about the color mode, the bit depth, or the color profile, take a look at one of our color settings videos, and I think that'll explain to you our philosophy and discipline that we use there. So let's go ahead and create that document. You can see that we have now our own 12 inch by 36 inch empty document here. If we look at the tab at the top, we can see that that's titled untitled dash one. So makes sense. Got that. No problem. Now let's go out and get our sample documents. So I'm going to do a file open and I happen to have placed these out here on my home folder on my hard drive in my computer. And you can see right here, I'll double click just to make this a little bit bigger. You can see we have the pile of limes. We have the row of glasses and the slices of lime. So those are the three sample images that we're going to use to put this poster together. I have highlighted and selected all three of them on the Mac. I just clicked on each one while holding down the command key. On Windows, that's clicking on each one while holding down the control key. And if I click on open, I get all three of them at one time. Don't worry about the color space warning messages here. Just go ahead and go with it. It'll be fine. Um, if, again, you have questions on that, take a look at our color settings videos, and that will explain that to you. So you can see here we have our three pictures. Here's our pile of limes. There's our row of glasses pictures. And there is our slices of lime picture. So the first picture I think we want to take over is this row of glasses. So we're going to make that our active picture. We're going to come down here to the layer control panel. We are going to grab this layer and drag it across, and we're going to come up here and hover over that untitled one tab, and that will make that the active document. We come down here to the middle. Now, one little trick I always like to do before I let go of the mouse key is I hold down the shift key, then I let go of that mouse button. I'm going to go ahead and ignore this message. I know my picture is not going to be the same size as my poster. We're going to deal with that in a minute, but there's my picture centered up right on top of my black background right where we want it to be. Now, obviously, not the right size. Easy enough to fix. Layer one is still active. That's the layer we just brought our picture in. But I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to double click on the word layer one, and we're going to say, we're going to call this uh, row of glasses. I can't remember exactly what it was called in the original, but that will certainly make sense. So that's our row of glasses. And with that layer still active, I am going to hit the V key until I get the move tool active. And you can tell the move tool is active because you can see it right up here in the toolbar. And if you notice, if I hit the V key again, I end up with the artboard tool. If I hit it again, I get back to the move tool. And there's my show transform controls around the contents of that row of glasses layer. If your show transform controls don't come on when you are in the move tool, make sure show transform controls right here is turned on. By default, it's not from the factory, so you want to make sure you check that one. So I'm going to click on this up here in this upper right-hand corner, and I'm going to start dragging out. And you can see as I'm dragging out, doesn't matter whether I drag upwards or I drag sideways, I'm dragging out an equal amount to one side as I am to one edge at the top. That is an aspect ratio constrained drag. That's the default mode that Photoshop works in. Can't change the aspect ratio of the image when you just grab a handle like that and drag it out. As soon as I hold down the shift key, you notice that whole equation changes. I can go any direction I want to go with that, which is nice and handy. Also, I'd like this to drag out in both directions from the center, and that's just as easy as adding in the Option key on the Mac, the Alt key on Windows, and boom, all of a sudden, I'm able to drag this out exactly the way I want it dragged out. So I like the width of that. I'm good with that. I'm going to let go with the mouse first 
and then my modifier keys second. Now it's not as tall as the glasses were in my original example that I was showing you. So I'm going to come down here along this bottom edge and start dragging down. You notice we get that aspect ratio constrained growth right away. Remember, hold down that shift key. It allows me to pull out in one direction and ignore aspect ratio. So there you go. I like that. I think that's lined up pretty goodly. Pretty goodly. Sounds like a Trump news conference. We're going to do this very strongly and powerfully, but with very compassionately. All right, I'm moving on. So if I'm happy with what I have here at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and hit the return or enter key, and that will commit this resizing chain. And we have our picture pretty much the way we want it. Now, I'm going to hop on screen here for a second and just uh, throw something in here at the last minute that I think matters, and aesthetically, it's pretty important. If you look at this picture with the glasses in it, the glasses all look like they're kind of leaning in from the bottom. They, they're not all straight up and down. And I don't know about you, but that'll bother me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the move tool with hitting the A key that puts me in the direct selection tool, makes the transform frame go away. And I'm going to do a command A on the Mac. That's a control A on Windows. And that selects everything on that layer. Now I'm going to do a command T on the Mac. That's a control T on window. And that puts us into the free transform mode where we can stretch and skew and rotate and do all sorts of fun stuff to this image. If I come up here in the middle of this picture and I right click, I get this nice pop-up menu. And what I want to do is I want to change the perspective a little bit in this picture. Now you notice as I come down here to the lower right and I start dragging this side out, both sides of the picture start to toe out at the bottom and those stems on those glasses become a little bit straighter. I think the left side looks pretty good. I think the right side's still a little bit out of square. Come back up here into the middle of the picture again, right click, and instead of perspective, which gets both sides, get distort which allows you to just pull out one side. And that little additional bit allows me to straighten up that stem on the right side. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit return or enter, if you will, to commit that change. And there is my layer with all my glasses in it. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to do that Command D on the Mac, Control D on Windows to make those marching ants go away of that selection. So we got our first step done here. We got our background in place and ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our text layer. And for adding in our text layer, I'm going to hop off screen here because I don't want to be in the way of the layers panel over here on the right because you want to be able to see that. So let me jump off here. I'm gone. And you'll see our row of glasses layer is our active layer, which means if we come over here and click on the text tool or hit the T key, either one, that will put us into the text tool mode. And if I come over here and click somewhere in the center, you'll see that I have a text block up that I can start typing in. And what we want to say is Margarita with an exclamation point. So there we go. Now, one of the things that I do, and there's a couple of different ways to do this, but I've kind of gotten used to doing it this way. Other Photoshop purists might say, oh no, I do it a different way, but that's fine. If I'm done editing the text, if I hit the escape key, that's going to undo what I just did. So what I'm going to do is just click on another layer. Now you can see I'm out of that text editing mode. And then I'm going to come back to my text layer. So I can turn on the move tool with the V key and be able to move this text around. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to take this text and I want to get centered up left to right and top to bottom. Well, I'm going to grab the text and start to drag it over. And you notice I get all my little magenta smart guides. And as I keep going over to the right, all of a sudden, boom, there's that up and down smart guide running from top to bottom. That tells me that I am centered left to right. And as I move this text block down, eventually I will see my smart guide going from the left side all the way to the right side, indicating to me that my text is now centered top to bottom as well. So that text block is perfectly centered up in the artboard that we have set up here for this picture. Now I would like to make it a little bit bigger. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. The completely controlled way is to double click right here on the text icon in the text layer. And that will make that text active. And then I could go up and change the font size. Or I could simply, with the move tool on, click right here in the corner. You'll see that all of a sudden our boxed resize. And I'm going to come up here and start dragging this out. And I get that text 
aspect ratio constrained just like any other move I would be doing. So I'm going to hold down the shift key so I don't have to stick with that aspect ratio. And then I'm going to hold down that option key on the Mac, Alt on Windows, and you can see I can size from the center. And I can go a little bit up and I can go a little bit out. And now I've really stretched out that text and made it fit in here pretty well. If I'm happy with that size, I'm going to go ahead, get, I am going to go ahead and hit enter to commit that change. So there's my text ready to go. Pretty straightforward. Not much to it. Now let's go ahead and put our layer effects on here. So I'm going to come down here and press on the layer effect button. And the first thing I'm going to do is add that stroke to the outside. Now, I've already got my yellow pre-picked, but I could come in here with the color picker right here and pick out any stroke color I wanted. Once I was happy with the selection, click on OK. And you can see that's now the stroke color outside my text. I'm going to add on an outer glow right here. So I'm going to come down and turn that on. And I already have my green selected here, but I could just as easily click on the color box right here. My color picker is up and I could come out here and I could say, well, I'd like my outer glow to be this color or that color, or I could pick it right out of here if I wanted to. A lot of times I find it's easiest to just pick that corresponding color right out of the picture that we're over the top of. It makes it fit really well with the color scheme. It's not a unique or clashing color. I'm going to click on OK to put the color picker away. That commits that color to here. And I'm going to click on OK to commit those two layer styles to that text block. Now, I'm going to hop back on screen for a second and talk to you about something. Now, you notice in our sample document, our text was black. And here, our text is filled with white. Considering that we are going to use this as the basis for a clipping layer, we don't care what our text fill is because that fill is going to go away. If you feel compelled to change it to black, feel free. Double click on the text icon to highlight all the text and change the text color. But if you know you're not worried about it and you know the clipping layer is going to make that color go away, then you can just leave it as it is and it will be fine. All right, let me get back out of the way off the screen here. There we go. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to bring in our picture of our lime slices. I think that's the one we're going to start off with here first. So looking at all the tabs up here, the first one that I see here in the middle that I've seen before is this rows of glasses, right? Well, we're done with that. So let's click on that X and get rid of that one. And then let's go ahead and bring up our slices of lime picture here. There it is. That's what we're going to use to clip into that text that we just created. So again, just like I did with our rows of glasses, I'm going to grab this background layer, drag it across here till I hover over Untitled 1. I'm going to come down here with that tab strip. I'm going to hold down the Shift key. and I'm going to drop that off again, ignoring that depth message. And I'm just going to drop this picture on top here. Okay, for our next step where we're going to clip this text, we want to have some notion of how the lines are going to lay out against the word margarita when the word margarita is framing them out. There are two ways that we can do this. One is knock down the opacity on the layer on top so we can see through it and see where the word margarita is at. Or we can go ahead and clip that picture now to the text layer below it, and we'll see it peeking through there. Either way is fine, whichever one you prefer to use. In this first example, I'm going to go ahead and do it with opacity. When I build my other sample text layer, I'll do it with clipping and then adjust it from underneath so you can see both ways. So back to our document and off we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is come up here, knock opacity down so I can see through it. So now I can clearly see my limes and I can see the word margarita and how they're going to line up. So I'm going to start just dragging things out here. Again, I get that aspect ratio constrained drag. So hold that shift key down to unlock that. And let's hold down the option key to stretch it out in both directions from the center. I think we're in pretty good shape for covering the bottom half of the word. Let's just stretch this up. Now you can see as we've stretched it up, we've kind of uncovered the top half or we've covered up the top half and we lost some of the bottom half. I'm going to have to actually zoom out a little bit, give myself a little more room to work, but same thing. I'm just going to keep dragging this out. Looks like we've covered the top part of Margarita pretty well. There's the bottom part. I think we got it pretty well covered. I like that. I think that's going to line up 
really nicely. Let's go ahead and hit enter to commit to that change. Um, I can go back to the, uh, I always go back to the direct selection tool just to make the move tool go away. That's the A key. And then I'm going to do a command zero on the Mac, control zero on Windows so we can see this full size. Now the first thing we got to do is undo that opacity change we did. Let's take that back up to 100% so we're not peeking through there. You can see now we're blocking everything underneath. And now we're going to go to the point where we actually right click on our layer one here and we select create clipping mask and immediately you can see that the word margarita the interior of that word is being used to clip the contents of layer one and i'm just going to double click here on the contents of layer one and say this is slices of lime just to keep that all squared away so there we go that's it that's all the more complicated it is to clip something into the layer below it. And as you can see with text, clipping something into the layer below it is super, super cool. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna undo my clipping layer for a second. And the only reason I'm undoing my clipping layer for a second here with release clipping mask is every once in a while, when I copy text that has something clipped into it, Photoshop has some interesting byproducts of that. And what I really want is another copy of this text layer. So I'm gonna come down here and highlight it and I'm gonna do a Command J on the Mac. That's a Control J on Windows. And I'm gonna put this second copy up above our slices of lime picture. So we've got another copy of that text. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reclip slices of lime into the clipping layer below it. And then we're gonna turn off this upper text layer just to make sure that we're still good. Yep, that's great. Everything is lined up there exactly the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so we've gone through our first example where we brought in our overlay, if you will, picture and clipped it into the margarita text below it. And we did that by changing layer opacity beforehand. This time we're gonna repeat the same thing, except now we're gonna do it with a pile of limes, and we're actually gonna clip it first and then resize it from underneath so you can see how both work. So let's hop out and do that. Okay, first things first, I'm done with slices of lime, right? Got that, let's close that down. Now we're down to just piles of lime. That's the last thing we need to get. So let's click on that. There's all of our limes. Again, we're grabbing this layer strip here dragging it over to the untitled dash one tab, coming down here somewhere in the middle and holding down that shift key. Let go of the mouse first. Shift key is gonna keep this centered and once again, we're gonna ignore that depth message. So there is our pile of limes, if you will. In fact, I'm gonna rename this layer so we can see it real quickly. Pile of limes, there we go. We gotta keep track of that. Now, because of where we left Photoshop at when we jumped from one document to the other, this got stacked up right on top of slices of limes, which of course is not the right place for it to be. We need to bring it up here above the second copy of our margarita text. And what we're gonna do real quickly just to avoid any confusion is I'm gonna turn off these, la these lower two layers, right? And we're just gonna have this text and pile of limes turned on so we can see our second text example. So remember I said this time we're gonna clip immediately. So here we are right clicking, create clipping mask. And there we go, we've done that. And we can see right away that our content is clipped by the word margarita. We can also see that it's not filling up the space the way we want it to. Here, we're gonna hit the V key for the move tool with pile of limes being the active layer. And I am just gonna start stretching this out. And remember we get that aspect ratio constrained stretch. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key to unlock that. And uh, I'm gonna hold down the option key on the Mac, alt key on Windows to make that stretch out. And, and there we go, as simple as that. You can see our limes in behind there, no problem, ready to go. If we're happy with the size that we've just created there, we're gonna go ahead and hit the return or enter key, and that's gonna commit that size to that layer. And as I have said before, I hit the A key, kind of the direct move tool to take the move tool off and uh, make the transform frame go away. Now, one thing that we showed you in our original example was that we felt that uh, this picture of these limes is a little too contrasty and we put that gradient layer on there real simple thing to do here again no problem we're going to go ahead and add a new layer this is where our gradient's going to go we're going to come over here and grab the gradient tool and then we're going to come up here and just click in this window and what we're going to do 
is we are going to change our colors here. So we're going to start with this color right here, this kind of, well, let's go with this lighter green here. And we're going to click on OK there. And then we're going to come over to this side and click on this color selector. And you can see down here, it brought up the color black. We're going to click on the color square right here, brings up the color selector. And we're going to go with a real deeper, darker green there. So there's our new gradient going from a light green on this side to a dark green on this side. So we've gone ahead and set that gradient the way we want it to look. Now, in the example over here, if you take a look at it, you can see that our gradient up here, let's look at our gradient layer real quickly, is a reflected gradient. It starts light in the center and it goes dark to the outside on both sides. So that means we must have used the reflected gradient to do that. And we started in the middle and drew out. So that's what we're gonna do here. So same thing, make sure we have reflected gradient selected. I currently have reverse turned on, which would be bad. So we're gonna turn that off, which will go light to dark the way we want it to do. And now what we need to do is we need to make sure we're doing this from the center. That's the way we get a really nice reflected gradient from the middle out to both edges. So I'm gonna come over here to the ruler on the left hand, hand side. I'm gonna drag out a guide. And you notice when I get to the center, see how it kind of locks or snaps into place there? That's the middle of our poster. Now, with our gradient tool, if we start in the middle, doesn't matter which direction we go, and we hold down the shift key, that forces it to say straight or horizontal, if you will, and let go, we now have a gradient that's reflected from the center out to both of the outside edges. Unfortunately, it's blocking all the picture, but that's as easy as right-clicking on our new gradient and creating the clipping mask with that, which clips it into the margarita layer underneath there. And there you can see it. I'm just going to double click on the word layer one and call this gradient fill. And if you remember from our original document, the way to make this look really great is to dial this back and let some of those limes from underneath show through the gradient. So there you have it. We have just in a fairly short order or small period of time, recreated that sample document in Photoshop. And I think you'll agree, it's got a really nice effect and it doesn't have to have taken a tremendous amount of work to get this done. So hopefully that uh, gave you some cool insights to how the clipping layers worked in Photoshop and especially how to make it work with text. So there's your video for the evening. Uh, I hope this uh, a, keeps you indoors and gives you margaritas to look forward to when our lockdown is over with. Trust me, I will be at a local Mexican cantina, no question about it. Hopefully you will too. Maybe we can all get together for a group party out there. In the meantime, stay inside, stay safe, stay healthy. Check back with us tomorrow for more new content. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a good night.